Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video, I would like to explain the slash scoreboard command in terms of word impacts. So basically, using slash scoreboard to detect actions and keep track of numbers. You know, the essentials. Um, I, I won't be going into the vanilla, like, applications of it outside of data packing. Um, which is literally just showing numbers on the screen, which you want to do with the data pack plus research pack. Not, I, I, I have some hatred towards using scoreboard to display numbers. <laughs> I will get into that. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, get started. All right. So, how does slash scoreboard work? Well. There are two parts of slash scoreboard, uh, slash scoreboard players, uh, and slash scoreboard objectives. So, before we can do anything with players, we need to first understand what an objective is, right? So basically how it works is you first create an objective, right? Uh, which you, you give a name. Um, I'll get into the details of exactly how you write everything later on. Uh, first, I just want the theoretical everyone to understand how they actually work. Um, so you, first you create an objective with some name and some type. Also, uh, basically a thing that people do in the naming system is to include the name of the data pack in the name of the scoreboard objective. The reason for that is because if two people want to detect sneaking, and they both name them sneaking, you're gonna get a conflict, right? So they need to have unique names, so you include basically just two characters for your variable in the name. So if you have superhero data packing, then you would have an sh dot sneaking, right? Really simple, really small, I just forgot to mention it when I recorded the rest. So you can, for example, create a scoreboard objective which keeps track of every time that a player jumps, right? Pretty simple. There's just an objective for that. Um, it doesn't keep track of every jump that the player has ever done. It just every time that the player jumps while the objective exists, the number for that player goes up by one because the player has jumped, it goes up by one. Then, you know, if the player jumps again, it goes up by one again. Um, while, you know, if, the, if if you remove the objective and then add it back again, obviously everything, there's no, you aren't keeping track of anything anymore, right? If you have two objectives that keep track of the same thing, they both have a unique set of numbers because they don't keep track of the the the. the Thing specifically, it's just the trigger that does it, you know. Um, there is uh, some small asterisks, you know, to that. Uh, you can also, for example, create a scoreboard which tracks health. Um, you can't, you know, it, it just shows you the health of the player, it doesn't keep track of an action, it just shows you the health. Same for experience, same for armor, you know, it just shows you the number of hit points that a player has. And then the next nice thing that really adds usefulness to this is you can set the value for an entity, right? Um, obviously, once again, health uh, and armor, uh, yeah, you can't because it, it's, you know. But for all the others, you can. Um, and if you can't, it, it gives you an error message. So, I mean, yeah. Um, basically, what that allows you to do is say, hey, is the number of jumps that this player has one? Well, if it's one, then I want to have fire particles everywhere. And then I want to say that the number is zero. Meaning that every time you jump, you get fire particles once and never again. Until you jump again, then you have fire particles. Um, and that it's, it's a really easy way to detect jumping, it's an easy way to detect right-clicking, uh, shooting a bow, any action basically, asterisks, uh, you can detect and easily do. Really nice, really good. The second part that, uh, that objectives are used for 
is when you have a specific type that's called a dummy objective. What a dummy objective is, is it doesn't keep track of anything. It never increases for anything ever. But you can store numbers. Which allows you to do math. And that, that's, that's the main thing. You can do math. You can uh, store numbers. You can check numbers. You can see what numbers are equal to what numbers. Fun math things that you generally don't need. But some, from time to time, it is extremely useful and uh, really, really cool. Um, so yeah, now onto the, the part of examples uh, showing how it actually works. Um, what I did with the just execute tutorial was I went through every single subcommand. I feel like that's an objectively bad thing to do because it, it, it presumably is quite boring. Um, so what I instead I'm going to do is going to show you a bunch of examples which will do things, <laughs> right? So, um, and hopefully at the end I'll have explained every single subcommand. And if there is one thing that I missed that I really want to show, then I can just explain it, right? Nice and easy, all good. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's get started then. All right, so the first example is a... Uh, well, I mean, the example I gave, jumping fire particles. Really easy. Uh, let's really quickly look at the code. Alright, so this is, first of all, inside of an as, and a, add, add, as, execute command. Um, obviously, if you didn't watch the execute video, you're confused. I recommend watching that one first, because execute is kind of very important. Um, and I created a jump objective with minecraft.custom minecraft jump. Really nice. All that this does is increase by one every time you jump. I feel like I've said that enough times by now. Yes. So all I have here is just an execute command, which has an if statement. So the command, uh, that's, that's, you know, everything from the statement forwards will only run if this matches true. So basically, what it is, well, if if there is a score, so a, a scoreboard objective, I feel like that was self-explanatory, of myself, and this should actually be an S, I, I made a typo. Uh, if the, the self has a jump value which matches one, aka I just jumped, and I have jumped once in my entire lifetime, then I have fire particles. And then, regardless of whether or not it matched one, I say, hey, it's zero here. It would be nicer to have this, you know, also inside of uh, this statement, but then instead of doing this command and that command, you have a function which runs both. However, that's not really worth it, and all you do is a fire particle. Um, but if you would be detecting a right click and then sending a projectile, it is mo it is very much so worth it. Um, so yeah. But yeah, this is all that there is to it. You just say, hey, if it matches one, do fire particles. And then you say that it has to be zero. Um, also, I would like to at this point say <laughs> that um, if something does make sense to you, or if you're trying to replicate something, it just doesn't work. Um, feel free to join my Discord and ask for help there. Because I am significantly more active on Discord than I am on YouTube. Um, which my upload schedule would probably suggest too. Um, and there's just an asking for help channel there. You can create a thread and just ask your question. And then I can help. Um, it also allows that you can send over files if need be. <laughs> it's uh, really useful. Um... But yes, I'm, I, I, I want to make sure everything is probably understood, but I feel like this is the, the basics that, that this is still pretty self-explanatory and uh, should be all good. Um, so yeah, on to the next example. All right, so I coded another thing. And what this is, is that whenever you sneak, you go invisible. Um, I'm currently in a team, so you can see my outline still. Um, yeah, it's really nice, really simple, 
except I added in another thing, because that is basically the exact same as what I already had, right? So now I've added in a second thing. Well, first of all, when I stop sneaking, you can tell I also stop being invisible instantaneously. Or with some small delay, because... Eh. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I also added, and if you keep sneaking, well, obviously, eventually, you know, I'm gonna stop being able to be sneaking. So, I also have a blinking effect until that happens, and then now I'm sneaking, but nothing is happening. Until I unsneak, and I sneak again. Et voila. Here we are. Really, quite simple. Let's actually show the code for it, because it was a bit of thinking <laughs> that I went into it. Right, so, you can tell it is immediately a lot more, right? Or at least, in this top explanation part, it's a lot more. Um, so it's still as every player at their positioning, same as normal. Um, but I've added a couple things. So, I have sneaking, which is the objective of sneak time. So, every tick that you're sneaking, it goes up by one. Pretty simple. Um, but then I've added another objective called Sneaking 2. And that's important. Because, well, you know, if I reset one, I don't reset the other. And I'll, I'll explain why that's necessary in a bit. Then I've added the first dummy objective ever. Um, so, once again, a dummy objective is an objective that never naturally increases, and it's just used so that you can keep track of numbers. Um, so I have made one called temp, which is where you store temporary data, and I have made one called const, which is where you call, you know, specify constants. And then I also immediately specified one. So the player called $20 has a value of 20. Now this, this dollar symbol here, um, you might think that that's just because I'm rich. Um, no, that, that's not the reason. Uh, the, the reason is so that this can't ever represent a real player. Um, and, and you call that a fake player. You can also do this by a percent symbol. That's also pretty commonly used. What I always do, though, is a dollar symbol. Um, because I am rich. Uh, no, uh, I, don't, I just like it. And it's just what I've done used to. Uh, right, on to the actual fun of it, right? Not just the, the objectives. Um, if I am sneaking, then I want to run the function is sneaking. If I am not sneaking, and I was sneaking, then I want to run the function of was sneaking. So basically... At the end, I then reset sneaking. So basically, if it's one, I know that I'm actively sneaking. But this one, I never reset, right? Or at least, I only reset that in here, as you can see. So when you stop sneaking, this resets. But until then, I know how long you've been sneaking for. Um, so yeah, really nice, really simple, a really clean way of doing it, in my opinion. Um, not really anything new, but uh, really quite handy. Uh, on to is sneaking. So obviously, uh, well, you saw that stopping sn uh, sneaking is just removing invisibility and resetting the timer. But is sneaking is done even more. So first of all, well, you know, for the, f uh, what is that, eight seconds that you ever get invisibility, you always start immediately with invisibility. Is that the cleanest way of doing it? No, but it's easy, and I am lazy. Um, but then here, here, we're, here we are starting to do math, right? Because that's that's for here. So after the first initial four seconds, you know, for the last four seconds, I want you to be blinking. So half of the time you are invisible, half the time you are not. So what I could do is, you know, uh, remove this, say, hey, from 80 to 90, then from 100 to 110, 
then from 120 to 1. But you can tell it's 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 ugly coding. You, you don't want to do this. So what I've instead done is done some math. So I've made another fake player. So just a value that is temporary, hence the, the temporary scoreboard. There's also sometimes that you want to store values that are not temporary, like constants right there, just numbers. Um, yeah, what I say first of all is, well, the time is equal to how long I have been sneaking, right? Good beginning, really nice, really clean. And then, uh, you know, that's done through an operation. So scoreboard players operation. Um, and that, that's just how you do math. That's inside of operations. A new operation here is, instead of saying it's equal to, I'm saying it is equal to through this thing, right? So, this is modulo. So if, for instance, basically it, it takes this number, and it removes this number from it as many times as it can while keeping this number not negative, right? So if my input number f uh, for, uh, for, like, my, my number on the left is uh, 19, and the number on the right is 5, right? Then you would, you know, have 19, well, that's positive, 14, well, that's positive, 9, well, that's positive, 4, well, that's positive, negative 1, well, that's negative, 4 it is. Obviously, the, the internals, it, it doesn't do this internally, um... But it, it's an easy way of understanding it. Um, uh, so yeah. So basically, since this is 20, it whenever it reaches 20, it becomes 0. And then it goes up, up and up and up. You know, 30, well that becomes 10, 31, becomes 11. And then right here, I just check, hey, is it between 0 and 10? Well, if it's between 0 and 10, then... I want to remove the invisibility. And that's literally all that there is to it. So yeah, this is a six and a half minute explanation of one simple system. I might dislike my method after all. Okay. But yeah, it's a it's a nice example, I think, and it uh I feel like it's quite nice. Also, in case you're wondering, the way that I'm doing all of this. Um, I am also using scoreboards for deciding which function I'm demonstrating. <laughs> it's, it's just a really useful command, honestly. Um, also, don't look at any of that. Um, great coding. Uh, right. On to my next example. Alright, so the next one is less technically complicated, um, but incredibly useful. So, right-click detection. Um, basically, when you right-click with a warp fungus on a stick, or a, a carrot on a stick for that matter, but um, carrot on a stick attracts pigs, and there's a higher chance that there's a pig near you, and that there's a strider near you, so generally people go for warp fungus on a stick. Um, and any time that you right-click it, while on a strider, you boost, right? You spend some durability, and you go faster, right? But there's a bug in Minecraft that if you right-click while not on a strider, it would still increase your statistics, right? And basically all of your statistics are part of the scoreboards. Like, there's a bunch of them that aren't. But any time, any the whole list of using, uh, placing, uh, you know, all of those are a part of it, and also a bunch of the other ones. Anyhow, you might see where this is going, meaning that I can detect the right clicking overwork from on stick anywhere. So now I right click and I bam, 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 bam. Um, so you could imagine that these are projectiles instead. For now, I just said a plain barnacle, but uh, you know, bam, 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 bam. um. It detects right-clicking every four ticks, so it isn't like 20 times a second, but five times a second is still pretty cool. Um, so yeah, 
<laughs> the, the code is extremely simple for this. Um, let's uh, go take a look. So, here we are again. Um, once again, just in an S at A, add an S, just for every player, at their positioning, run these commands. Um, and the scoreboard objective is just saying, hey, any time that you use a uh, warp fungus on a stick, increase by one. If it's one, half flame particles, set to zero regardless of whether or not it's one. Just the exact same like the jumping. Exact same. Um, and this is the most common format, honestly. Just, hey, if it's one, set to zero. And if it's one, do some particles. It's really simple. Really nice, really neat. Alright, so the next one is less theoretical and it's more of a practical application. Um, to try to, you know, show more things at once. Um, so yeah, basically it is something that I've actually made and have been using quite a lot. And it's actually the, the camera system. It uh, uses quite a lot of scoreboards and, uh, you know, it's quite nice, so I can just teleport the, the player around actively and just, uh, you know, do that. So basically, the way that it works is if I'm in my last slot, my eighth slot, because slots obviously start at zero, and then go into a slot that is not my last slot, then I teleport the player to that position. Um... That might sound really simple, but I, I did some really fun stuff, right? Meaning that the there's an entity right there where the, the, the player is being teleported, right? And that's great because that entity has a scoreboard value just like the player. But instead of it constantly changing, it is just a fixed value. Um, this one is four, uh, this one is one, two, three, four, five. And then, I mean, you can go on to six, but there's no entity for that because I didn't add a camera perspective for that. Um, but yeah. So, because these, uh, the, the, these entities also have scoreboard objectives, I can detect those, compare them to the player, and teleport the player to the entity that has the same value. Um, which is quite neat, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's uh, really quickly just show the code, because it's, uh, it's quite something. Alright, so because this is clearly an actual code thing, you can tell it's a bit more of a mess, because that's how it goes. Um, obviously, these are for my tutorial things so far. Um, but all of this is irrelevant. So basically... Um, right, so so let's really quickly explain some uh, basic things first. So this is, hey, if I am the main account, do those things, right? I should have put those in an individual function, but it's fine. But here I actually did. So if I am my alt account, command the glitchery, because bad luck, um, then run the function of command glitchery. This is just for FOB, so it basically gives the, the speed effect to lower my FOV, because if you, you're slowed down, you, you have a more zoomed in view. Um, isn't the best way to do it, but it's fine. Um, then you have um, right here. So cam view is a number that dictates which camera you are viewing, right? That is just a dummy objective. Then data is what I'm using as a temporary value <laughs> because I couldn't be bothered making a temporary scoreboard. So it just uses data. Um, so I'm saying, hey, this temporary value of cam is equal to my value. And you might think, well, why do you need to do that? Well, it's actually because right here I'm saying as every entity, right? Oh, like every entity with a tag of cam view, right? I, I don't think I've explained tags yet. But they basically allow you to tag an entity and say, hey, anytime that I'm specifying an entity with this tag, apply that to every single entity that has this tag. So, 
what I say? Hey, if my score, aka the entities that has Stack of Camp View score, is equal to the number that was just stored from the, the player that's executing this, right? Then teleport the nearest player, because I never changed the position. Teleport the nearest player here. And this is all good and all, but now I would need to manually change the cam view. Right, that, that would work, but that would be a bit meh. Right, so that is these four commands. So, first I'm saying, hey, execute store into a slot. As, into a scoreboard objective called slot. Um, so, basically, this is a part of the execute command. And you can say that the output of a command, whatever, whatever the result of the command is, is stored into the numeric value, assuming it is a number that comes out of it, otherwise you, you'll just have success and stuff. Um, but yeah, then what I run is data get into the selected item slot. So which slot in your hotbar? Oh, the hover effect already says everything for me. Wow, I love this plugin. Uh, the hotbar slot the player has selected. Pretty easy, really nice. And now I know what slot the player has selected. But I don't just need to know which uh, slot the player has selected. I know I need to know which one it had selected. Because if I have a slot of 4 and I had a slot of 8, I need to do something. But if I have a slot of 4 and I ha had a slot of 4 before as well, then, then, then I need to do nothing, right? So when everything is done, I say, hey, old slot in, uh, as a temporary value is equal to slot, right? So if my slot is 4, next tick, old slot is going to be 4. If this slot changes, this one doesn't change until the end of the, the whole chain. So if I'm not hovering over 8 right now, and I was hovering over 8 right, uh, you know, a moment ago. Then say that command glitchery scan view is equal to slot. And then what I also say is that it should be plus 1. Uh, because when I made all of my entities, I numbered them 1 through 5 instead of 0 through 4. So everything was one too low, it was a problem, it's fine now. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then inside of this function, you can see, I just say, hey, get the score of the nearest entity, their FOV. But because selectors are so, so laggy, right? Selectors, if you do them on a larger scale, having a selector constantly running 20 times a second dozens of them, hundreds of them, it gets really laggy. However, a fake player, it has no selector. It's really efficient. It's really good. Um, meaning that I'm taking the selector and I'm putting the value into here. And then I'm checking this value over and over again because that's way more efficient than having this over and over again. And then all I just say, hey, if it is one or above, then add the attribute to make the player slower by this amount. And if it's not, then remove the attribute to make the player slower by that amount. Remove, remove, remove. And all of that adds up nicely. I actually made this whole thing with the slightly older. I ha I've made quite a few changes to it, honestly. But I made the alpha version of this system uh, in a video. Uh, it was quite fun. Um, if you want to watch that. Feel free to. Um, but yeah, that is all that there is to the system. Somehow I explained my super cool camera system in less time than I did to explain being invisible while sneaking. But it's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, once again, if you have questions, feel free to ask in uh, my Discord. Um, but yeah, that's, I think, all that there is to the system. Alright, so I think that's all that I'm going to do for specific examples. Um, from here on out, it's just going to be some really useful information, I think.
Um, right, so I, I, I wrote down a list of things that I wanted to say in this video. I've been planning it for months, apparently. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, there are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. So first of all, um, what you really easily can do is slash scoreboard objectives set display. Uh, and then saying sidebar and then saying, uh, I don't know, temp, right? And then you can see on the sidebar all of the values that, that you know, are shown here. Uh, you know, obviously there's a max height of this, so eventually it'll just show the highest values, not everything. Um, but you can see the values and if something is going wrong, you can use that to, you know, book tests and, and see the values and you know, all of that. But you shouldn't use this to display information. Um, surfers do it a lot. Um, and while MCCI, for example, uh, MCC Island, um, does that okay-ish, um, they basically remove the red numbers on the side. And they also do some stuff to change the background of it. Uh, you know, some extra bits using shaders um which make it fancy enough to be allowed to be used in my opinion because i assume that they are also doing it in order to save on performance because it's a lot easier than creating a whole custom gui thing it, it just it's not that neat um but yeah what you generally want to do is use json to display scores and other things, right? So, um, tell Ra as score um, objective temp is it value? I don't really remember. What's the error? Name. That's it. It should be a name. A name of dollar symbol sneaking time. And that is now shown to everyone. Right, so you can see see in chat it says 36, and that's because I, I showed that number. If I say sneaking time mod, then it becomes zero. And this is obviously kind of useful when you put it in chat. Uh, also, you can include um, some text in front of it. You know, simple things. But what, what really makes this useful is, for example, boss bars. I can make a boss bar. Add. Test with that name. Boss bar set. Test layers at A. And then you can see at the top, you can see the name, right? But you can also set the name. Again. Over and over again, so if the score changes, the number up there changes. So what I, for example, in my Monsters Industry map did was I removed the boss bar, so you couldn't see that the you know the actual bar itself, but you could see the numbers. So I use that to display the time for how much time is left until the game ends, and also to display the scores of the teams. Really easy, nice at the top without any ugliness around it. It's Really clean, really nice. The second thing I wanted to mention, uh, that's actually just a scroll projection space sidebar to remove that, boss bar, remove, Minecraft test. Um, the next thing that I want to mention is a specific type, which is a trigger objective. So scoreboard objectives, add trigger of a trigger type. Now, what I can say is scoreboard players enable at a trigger and now I can run slash trigger trigger which then changes if I do scroll to the face sidebar trigger you can tell I can you know my value is now one I can enable it again I can trigger with a set of two and now I can set it to two um, and basically any time that I trigger it it just goes up by one which as Amply demonstrated, you can detect, and you can activate things. So you can make players who aren't op, they don't have OP, they can't run commands. You can make specific players run commands. 
Um, I think that you need to remember is that you need to enable the, uh, the, the, the objective every time they use it as well. Uh, and, you know, just basically just constantly enable it for them. And then they can trigger it and then do stuff. So this is most commonly used if you want settings. If you want to have settings for, hey, um, you know, I, I have this thing that can explode. Maybe some people don't want their worlds to explode. So for them, I have a setting that you can turn it off. And then you can trigger it and then have a nice menu and it does stuff. Um, so yeah, slash trigger is really useful if you want to have numeric inputs. Um, or have people run commands. Um, but yeah, that should be everything, I think. Um, so yeah. Um, this video obviously took quite a, a bit to make. Uh, I've, you know, tried to make it as short as possible. That absolutely failed. It's probably longer than such slash execute tutorial now. Uh, but yeah, if, if you like the video and the new format, um, feel free to like the video and give me a nice comment because uh yeah anyhow um yeah also uh once again if you are have questions about something that i showed or if you are trying to do a thing with such scoreboard but it doesn't work you just don't understand something um feel free to ask i i can't promise that i'll help but uh uh i i'll, I'll probably try um, but yeah, with that all, uh, said and done, um, you know, please subscribe, thanks, I'm, I'm almost at a thousand now, and it's, it's really cool, I'm, ah, uh, it, 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 <laughs> I almost have one of the criteria for making money from this, uh, complete, oh, I, I now just need to have, you know, double my amount of view time, that's all, uh, uh, sometimes I wonder whether or not this whole thing is, uh, you know, working for people who make coding videos because I feel like I'm not the right, you know, I have a very specific demographic of people who want to watch my videos, presumably, but hey, it's fine. Uh, anyhow, with that all uh, said and done, let's uh, remove the sidebar and uh, cut the day for today. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all learned something. See you all in the next one. Bye.